Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about why you need to wear sunscreen indoors. I'm gonna be going over the science behind it and debunking some common myths and misconceptions that I see in the comments a fair amount. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a board certified dermatologist. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my videos out a lot. We wear sunscreen to protect our skin from ultraviolet radiation. Ultraviolet radiation comes from the sun and includes UVB, which are the rays that burn your skin, and UVA, which are the rays that penetrate very deeply into the skin and destroy your collagen, contribute to skin cancer formation, and also contribute to uh, a variety of photosensitive issues, including hyperpigmentation and melasma. Some sunscreens also can protect you against visible light, light that you see with your eyes. Why is this important? Well, we have recently learned that certain wavelengths of visible light in the blue light spectrum do contribute to early onset and more stubborn hyperpigmentation in people with medium to deep skin tones. Um, so sunscreen is a really important part of keeping your skin healthy. Why the heck would you need to wear it indoors though? If the sun is outside, why would you need to wear sunscreen indoors? All right, first and foremost, you may not be aware of this, but one part of sun, the UVA rays, does in fact come in through window glass. About 75% of UVA rays are allowed through window glass in most homes. So you are being exposed to UVA. Obviously this is gonna be much greater if you are sitting next to a window and less obvious of a risk if you are in a room with no windows whatsoever, but it still is an exposure that is significant. Indoor lighting also contributes to a lot of free radical damage in the skin that cumulatively over time does play a role in skin aging and in damage to the skin, ultimately potentially contributing to skin cancer risk. I say potentially because it's not like we have really good epidemiologic studies on this, but people who work indoors do still get skin cancers and we're spending more and more time indoors less time outdoors, yet our skin cancer rates are going up. Halogen bulbs do in fact emit ultraviolet radiation. Now they are coated with something to block some of that out and the amount of UV that is blocked out is unknown. And the other type of lighting that does contribute to damage in the skin is fluorescent bulbs, which you may be exposed to in your work environment. It is estimated that fluorescent bulbs and overhead lighting increase our lifetime exposure to ultraviolet radiation by about 3%, which may not sound like a lot, but it is very significant. Now, while the effects of indoor lighting on the skin are difficult to study, uh, it's difficult to control for how close people are to different types of light and the nature of lighting in their home, these types of studies are obviously going to be limited by recall bias. Um, however, we do have one good study on children who have a very uh, photosensitive disease called xeroderma pigmentosa. In this study, they measured with a spectral radiometer the amount of UV rays indoors, and it actually was pretty significant, enough to contribute to their disease. And you may be like, well, I don't have a photosensitive disease. Um, true, but cumulatively with your, over your lifetime, those damaging rays can add up principle of cumulative damage that I'm referring to here was established in the early 80s and 90s. When individuals are exposed to repeated doses of UVA or UVB below the dosage needed to begin to induce redness, they will still develop redness within five days. This implies that the damage induced by low dose UV accumulates with time and eventually becomes clinically apparent. These studies also demonstrated pretty significant cellular changes in the skin taking place in response to chronic low UV exposure doses, including epidermal hyperplasia, stratum corneum thickening, depletion of Langerhans cells, increased dermal inflammatory infiltrates, and deposition of something called lysozyme on elastin fibers. Now, it's important to point out that this damage accumulates only when the skin is not given adequate time to recover from this initial insult of low UV dose exposure. Um, if repeated exposures are spaced appropriately, the skin can recover. Unfortunately, this isn't really a practical solution for the everyday person who's exposed to indoor lighting on a daily basis, if not hourly basis. So we have a good bit of data showing that the commonly used indoor lamps do emit appreciable levels of UVR. Even though the dose is very low, the exposure time is pretty long. We are under those lights all day long, and this may result in significant cumulative damage with time. 
And then we're also exposed to visible light indoors. Visible light in the blue light wavelengths does contribute to a significant burden of free radical damage in the skin. And also, as I mentioned earlier, leads to early onset and persistent hyperpigmentation in people with medium to deep skin tones. So anybody trying to fade hyperpigmentation needs to be aware of those pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. Now, the majority of them come from the sun, but they do come through window glass, just like UVA. Uh, so being indoors does not protect you from them. They are also given off by our devices. Now, they're given off in very, very small amounts, and the relevance of that is unknown. But bear in mind, you are pretty close to those devices, like your um, tablet, for example. And so we are learning more and more about blue light and its damaging effects on the skin. And we're feeling pretty confident that it's important to protect your skin from those rays. Uh, they do appear to lead to free radical damage in the skin. The science is there. A lot of people like to comment in my comment section that they believe that the amounts that we're exposed to indoors of UV, pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light are insignificant. But uh, while they may be small, cumulatively over your lifetime, they likely do play a major role, not only in skin aging, but also in diseases of hyperpigmentation and melasma, uh, and potentially in skin cancer risk. Again, as I said at the onset of this video, uh, we spend a lot of time indoors. Most people spend the majority of their time indoors. We're not like, you know, out tending to, tending to the fields <laughs> like we were a long time ago. Skin cancer rates are increasing. For these reasons, we do recommend that people wear sunscreen every single day year round, including when they are indoors, applying it once a day at least uh, if you are gonna be indoors most of the time. However, I think it's a good idea to apply it more than once a day. Why? Well, sunscreen comes off, and we know from the studies that people under-apply sunscreen. They apply about 20% of what they need to to actually uh, protect their skin. And as a result, they end up with a very, very low SPF. Furthermore, people skip areas, and people um, uh, also lose a lot of sunscreen because its substantivity decreases uh, with time, and it comes off with friction, moving around, uh, if you brush up against something, it's going to come off. I mean, I'm sure many of you have come to realize this now that we're wearing masks. When you take your mask off, have you ever noticed how there's sunscreen residue in there? Yeah, I mean, it does come off, despite what people might believe. It comes off, it rubs off, it comes off with sweat. You may not be pouring out sweat, but you do have basal perspiration as part of everyday fluid exchanges. And so that too contributes to loss of substantivity of that sunscreen film, hence why it needs to be reapplied. And reasons for reapplying sunscreen include compensating for the initial under application and uh, replacing what is removed from friction on the skin and from exposure to water, sweat, uh, you know, your clothing rubbing against you, those things, touching your skin, etc. Um, you don't need to reapply sunscreen every two hours while you are indoors, but you should reapply it because again, it's gonna rub off and you under applied it to begin with. So another application at some point in the day, if you are indoors all day, is prudent to replace what is removed and what you missed to begin with. Other measures that you can take in your home to reduce your exposure to UV are switching out your light bulbs to LED. They don't emit UV. Um, not sitting close to lamps uh, that might potentially emit UV, and also not sitting close to a window, uh, which I'm doing right now, but I have on SPF 100, two layers. Having curtains, these can help reduce those exposures. The other reason to apply sunscreen every single day, including when you are indoors, is that it's a habit, and it only works if you do it. <laughs> And putting on sunscreen, it is not foolproof. As you can tell, there are many limitations. People don't apply enough and, they, um, and it rubs off. Um, but doing it every day is just a little bit of extra protection against day-to-day -day environmental uh, exposures that you're gonna encounter whether you're indoors or outdoors. There's a lot of data to support wearing sunscreen to reduce the visible signs of photoaging. Um, evidence from observational studies, a very large randomized control trial, and many smaller non-randomized control trials demonstrate the efficacy of daily sunscreen usage for reducing the appearance of the visible signs of photoaging, including wrinkles, T-line jactasias, which are those dilated blood vessels, 
and pigmentary alterations like sunspots. If you are trying to fade sunspots, wear your sunscreen every single day. We also have a very good study in people with deeper skin tones uh, showing that wearing sunscreen every single day and doing nothing else resulted in visible improvement in hyperpigmentation. So if you are somebody out there with a medium to deep skin tone who maybe has been misled um, by the idea that you don't need sunscreen, you certainly do. Your skin, while not as likely to burn from those UVB rays, which glass blocks out anyways, uh, your skin is likely to sustain damage from UVA that comes through window glass and those pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light definitely have an impact on the health of your skin, generating a lot of free radicals that can contribute to aging and ultimately contribute to decline of skin function. You guys know in my videos, I always emphasize that it's not about the aesthetics, it is about preserving function. And a benefit of doing that is that your skin looks better. But that is not the that is not the primary goal with protecting your skin from the sun. I will always get comments from people who say, "Well, hey, I am indoors. There are no windows. Um, you know, I don't have any of these types of lamps, and, and I'm going to be indoors most of the day. Do I need to apply sunscreen?" You should, in my opinion, because here's the thing: you may go out. And knowing what we know about how your initial application of sunscreen is not enough, you need to apply a couple of layers to really get you substantial protection. If you wait to put on sunscreen right before you go out, you're basically going out with less than ideal coverage. If you apply sunscreen in the morning and then say your plans change and you go out mid afternoon, you apply sunscreen again before you go out, there is a better chance that you are going to get a protective layer on there. Studies show that in real world use conditions, when people apply sunscreen a second time, their exposure to UV drops two to three times that of a single, of a single application. So that's why it's really important. If you don't wear sunscreen and you're indoors all day and then all of a sudden your plans change and you end up having to go out, if you just, if you wait, if you wait to put on sunscreen to right before you go out, you're basically accepting the fact that you're going out with a less than ideal layer of sunscreen on. I don't care what you say, people will comment, well, I apply enough, I apply enough. The data doesn't support that. Most people will not apply enough sunscreen, period. Your skin is not a flat sheet, it is a 3D structure. Just putting one layer of sunscreen on is going to miss a lot of your skin surface area. Uh, just one layer of sunscreen, you still have visible epidermal marking, markings. It misses areas. Um, and so putting on another layer ensures that you cover those. It's very similar to painting a textured wall. You can appreciate the fact that one coat of paint is not enough. Uh, and you're going to have areas that are, are still visible uh, through the paint that uh, the paint is not gonna cover. You need to do multiple coats. Same thing is true for your, the same thing is true for your sunscreen usage. Just one coat is missing a lot of surface area and multiple coats are needed. So if you start the day with a coat on and then you put on another coat in the event that you have to go out or you put on another coat just as habit, you are already very close to a very good protective layer before you end up having that exposure. Plus you are, that helps protect you against any UV that you may be exposed to indoors. Yeah, I find it comical that when I make these videos and I'm, I, I tell you guys that you need to wear sunscreen every day and reapply it, I will always, always get comments. This is not sustainable, it's extreme. I can't keep up with it. I'm too busy, blah, 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 blah. All I'm telling you here is that it's a good idea to put it on every day and reapply it when you're indoors all day. I'm not telling you that you need to be bathing in sunscreen. Remember, you should never rely exclusively on sunscreen for your sun protection. It helps a lot, but you need other things when you are outside. You need hats, you need uh, sun protective sunglasses, long sleeves, sun protective clothing. You really need that full package. But putting it on every day is a step in the right direction to protecting your skin overall. And I think it's funny that I will get those comments like, this is extreme, I can't be bothered to put on sunscreen every single day if I'm just indoors all day. But if I got on here and made a video telling you guys about vitamin C, 
a vitamin C serum, I would get zero comments that it's not sustainable to put on a vitamin C serum every day. If I got on here and talked about any other ingredient in skincare, uh, any antioxidant or any other serum, toner, or whatever, no one comments that putting it on every day is not sustainable. I never get that comment from other products whatsoever. Uh, so I just find it funny that the one thing that has the most data behind it for reducing the visible signs of photoaging, preserving skin function, and reducing your risk of skin cancer is somehow not doable. Uh, you can't be bothered, but all of these other things are somehow somehow doable. And I do get a lot of comments too that it's too expensive, which I beg to differ. Uh, yes, many sunscreens, especially the, a lot of the ones I use, I will admit are expensive. Um, I, that's what I like to spend my money on. But there are so many affordable sunscreens out there that you can use. For example, Walgreens has a great sunscreen, Walgreens Sensitive Skin. It is a sunscreen for like $3, <laughs> no fragrance. Um, and it looks pretty good on the skin. And best of all, it's eligible for FSA dollars. Yes, what is a flexible spending account? Well, it is an account set aside where you put dollars into it that you then spend on out-of-pocket healthcare costs, including sunscreen. Yes, sunscreen is an out-of-pocket healthcare cost. And those dollars you then do not have to pay tax on. Vitamin C serums are not FSA eligible. Why? Because they're cosmetics. Uh, and you know, they're not, they're not medications, they're not healthcare costs, they're just a cosmetic. Just like, you know, mascara is not gonna be eligible for FSA dollars. But sunscreen is. Why? Because it can help reduce not only photoaging of the skin, but also can help in reducing skin cancer risk and reducing the risk of a burn, which is which is applicable when you are outdoors, not when you're indoors, to be clear. You can't, you can't really get a sunburn while you're indoors because again, UVB is blocked by glass, but UVA also destroys the collagen in the skin and we know contributes to skin cancer risk. That is coming through window glass. And so you, you, you do need to protect your skin. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of people like to sit here and argue that the exposures that you have indoors are insignificant, but cumulatively over your lifetime, they do add up. You're spending a lot of time indoors and you're spending a lot of time up close to these devices that do emit some amount of visible light that does contribute to early onset uh, hyperpigmentation and causes a lot of free radical damage in the skin. Sunscreen is a very simple intervention and I will list some of my favorites down below in the description box. Uh, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.